Uh, good afternoon from Copenhagen. Uh, my name is Gabriela Prata-Diaz and I, I will be your host uh, this uh, afternoon uh, for this webinar, on, which is part of the ministerial uh, level thematic forums running up to the high-level dialogue on energy, uh, which will happen in September 2021. So uh, for today, uh, we will have a short event around policies and investment uh, on energy efficient lighting models for success. And today with me, I have um, Soledad Garcia from uh, UN Environment uh, Program and also Valentina De Marco from uh, Argentina from the Network of Municipalities Against Climate Change. Uh, we will be uh, also taking advantage of this event uh, to, to do the official launch of a few tools that we have uh, at the Copenhagen Center on Energy F Efficiency produced uh, over uh, the last month. And uh, so we will uh, take the opportunity to do the official launch of these tools. Uh, so part of the program, you will see uh, there are a few uh, videos that we would like to broadcast uh, during the event so that you are acquainted with uh, these information tools which are free to use. But I will start by saying that uh, the mo motivation to develop uh, this uh, event today is because lighting appliances and, and equipment are actually accounting for more than 50% of the electricity demand around the world. And uh, this is expected to double up to 2050 which is uh, quite relevant. However, um, there are uh, uh, large opportunities around energy efficiency uh, in lighting appliances and equipment, and particularly uh, in, um, in lighting uh, equipment. And the whole uh, um, grouping of, of these uh, opportunities for efficiency could, in all these uh, three sectors of lighting, appliances and equipment can, can represent savings of about 60, 60 billion uh, dollars annually. So we would like uh, to, to address that topic uh, today. Um, we also know that right energy efficiency policies could represent about 40% uh, of the emissions reductions that are needed for, for compliance with the Paris Agreement. However, this potential is not being grasped. So what is uh, actually hindering the progress on energy efficiency? Um, well, we can uh, mention a, a couple of things like uh, a lack of uh, right policies and, and its implementation, knowledge and capacity, and uh, the appropriate uh, business models and bankable projects that could help implement these uh, technological solutions uh, around energy efficiency. So with this event, we, we aim today at uh, presenting opportunities for the market transformation, specifically on the lighting sector, and, uh, and address uh, topics like policy development, tools, uh, and business models that could be implemented and replicated. I would uh, just like to say that uh, um, we are, of course, broadcasting from Copenhagen, from the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. And we actually uh, dedicate uh, a lot of our time to helping developing countries and emerging economies to advance uh, energy efficiency implementation. We work a lot with municipalities, uh, so a lot of, on local level, and we will hear from uh, municipalities uh, in Argentina today. But we also work uh, supporting UN Environment Program on implementing uh, energy efficiency policies uh, around the world, especially, as I mentioned, on in developing countries and emerging economies. Uh, the topics we tend to address uh, in our daily work are par apart from street lighting and lighting issues, but also uh, energy efficiency in buildings. So all the topics related to, to insulation, ventilation, lighting inside buildings, uh, and so on and so forth. And also district energy as a solution for efficient uh, heating and cooling of, of buildings. And of course, uh, a last sector that we touch upon in the urban context is uh, transportation. So uh, this is where we focus most of, active, of our activities. And for that, we also um, 
encourage the use of uh, the tools that we have at our hands, um, which in our case and the ones that we will be showing today are uh, free use. Um, they are available in our website. And uh, in this case, we are, we are going to broadcast uh, just now uh, a video, a tutorial video uh, regarding um, a tool that we have developed and uh, which is available on, uh, for free use and on our website on street lighting efficiency calculation tool so that you can use that uh, to uh, buy as you are for example a municipal official you you run that tool with a few inputs uh, data inputs that you can uh, that you can introduce and get uh, results on the on the potential for energy efficiency gains in street lighting uh, in in your uh, municipality for example and also it's uh, opportunities in terms of CO2 uh, savings and what would be the estimate rough investment associated with that. So uh, with that, uh, we will uh, go now to, to the short video, uh, five minute video where you can learn how to use this tool. You will see it's very easy and um, it's free uh, to use and available from our website. So uh, I would like, to introduce you now to the video. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this short educational video by the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. Now, this video is about the tool we have developed, the Street Lighting Energy Efficiency Calculator which is an online tool that enables municipalities to calculate the savings they can realize on public lighting systems. The tool is online and accessible on our website. Now, on this page, first off, the user needs to fill in some basic information about themselves, including municipality name and the country of origin. Now, regarding this example, we have used real life data for it to be accurate. However, the municipality was not located in Lebanon. Population needs to be entered, average of sunlight hours in the country, the price of electricity, and the year of data submission. Now, onto the tool itself. The user needs to fill in the fixtures, that is the lighting systems they have, the power, number of fixtures, and the local cost of the lamp. Here on the left, many types of lamps are listed to accurately represent a lighting system. For this system, we have mercury vapor lamps, metal highlight, high pressure sodium, and LED lamps. Now, a note about LED. As you enter the data of your, of your system, so power, number, and price, you also need to fill in the lumen output of the lamp in lumen per watt. If it is not filled for every box, for every lamp, then the tool cannot run. Now, once the fixtures have been entered, on to dimming practices. So, what are dimming practices? Dimming is when the intensity of the lighting system is reduced for a certain number of hours per day to reduce consumption. There is a certain percentage of dimming and a certain percentage of the lamps that are dim, as well as a certain number of hours per year. Uh, in this example, no dimming was used. Please uh, enter accordingly to your municipality. Now, regarding the financial part, running cost and maintenance, first of the tool needs to know who is in charge of the maintenance of the lighting system, either the municipality or an external company. Then the average cost of man labor in US dollars per hour is entered, as well as the average cost of equipment. That would be the use of vehicles, fuels, security, whatsoever. Now, as everything has been entered, you can then click show results to generate a report that is uh, separated in several parts. First off, you visualize the savings that can be made from your current lighting system if it is switched to an LED street lighting system. 
Now, uh, the tool also includes, if you use dimming controls, that is sensors to dim the lamps when no one is around, or if you don't. Now, here you can visualize the electricity savings in gigawatt hour per year. So, fully LED without controls, fully LED with controls. Now, you can also visualize the financial savings and uh, thousands of dollars per year, again, without and with controls. And finally, the CO2 emission savings that are realized. Now, here in this part of the report, you can visualize the technology mix that you are currently using on the left. So here we have LED, high pressure sodium, mercury vapor, the types of lamps that we are currently using. And here on the right, the annual cost comparison in US dollars, the baseline, that is the system you are currently using, LED without controls and LED with controls. Finally, you are presented with the investment that will be need, needed to realize the change to LED lighting system and the payback period, that is after which time uh, the municipality gets its money back from the savings realized on the system. And finally, you receive some assumptions on how the system is functioning. So that is it for our street lighting energy efficiency calculator. You can access it on the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency website. Please come back to us if you have any additional questions regarding the tool and have a very nice day. So uh, uh, we hope that you have enjoyed the, the video uh, tutorial and uh, this will be a useful tool for you uh, and, and fellow colleagues to use in the future. One thing I, I should say is that uh, this tool was developed uh, together with uh, support from uh, United for Efficiency, which is a UNEP-led uh, initiative. And by the way, we have with us, as I mentioned before, Soledad Garcia, which uh, uh, is a uh, also uh, supporting United for Efficiency uh, in, in their work. And she will now come in uh, uh, in this event to talk about the opportunities for market transformation of lighting appliances and, re and equipment. So with that, please, the floor is yours. So thank you very much for the presentation. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, as Arena mentioned, my name is Soledad Garcia. I'm part of the UPOI team. And I would like to introduce you to the United Proficiency Initiative and the work that we have been doing on market transformation. So this is a brief introduction. Euphoria is a global initiative led by UN Environment and funded by the Global Environment Facility. And we are supported by a wide range of different global companies and organizations. We provide uh, independent and, and tailor technical support to countries to transform their markets to more energy efficient lighting appliances and equipment to achieve substantial energy, financial and CO2 savings. We support with the second goal of the c 4 UN Secretary Initiative, which is to double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency uh, to bring the important benefits that has meant um, and I'm sure that you're very much aware, but just a few examples, uh, achieve savings on the electricity bill, given the lower uh, energy consumption, which increases the purchasing power of end users. Uh, with the lower consumption, there's a release of the power generation capacity and a reduction of the government subsidies, allowing countries to better respond to growing energy demand. On the industrial side, the replacement of energy efficiency equipment uh, help business to strive towards higher productivity, and last but not least, reduction of CO2 emissions and air pollution, which contributes to meet the two degrees climate target. So we focus on five products, lighting, refrigerators, air conditioners, electric motors, and distribution formers, which as Daniela mentioned, uh, these products together consume more than half 
the electricity utilized worldwide. So, um, eco restructures, there are projects in what we call the integrated policy approach, which encompasses these five areas you can see here on the screen. Standards and regulations, bare knowledge, minimum energy performance standards with maps, supporting policies, which includes labeling and communication campaigns, monitoring, verification, and enforcement, financial mechanisms, and environmental thought management. So standards, labeling, and market-based incentives do work. And with this graph, I would like to show a little bit how these components relate one another. So we start with the development or the update, because this depends on each country of the maps, which is the cornerstone from our projects, and it's based on the market features uh, from each country or region. This regulation, what does is to ban those products that are inefficient or obsolete from the market. So afterwards, we propose um, a labeling scheme or a rescaling case there's already one to promote the most energy efficiency products from the market and also to provide true information to end users. So such products usually are more pricey and therefore we develop different financial mechanisms and incentives with banks and local financial institutions to bridge this price gap and make them more affordable. Uh, of course, um, there's, it doesn't make much sense to have maps if there's not an MBE system in place to oversee the market and ensure the maps compliance. So this component includes working with laboratories and testing standards, methodologies, custom controls, different tools and resources like tracking tools, product registration system, uh, custom codes, and so on. And last but not least, environmental zone management, for the proper recollection and final disposal of all those products that we are taking out of the market and that might contain hazardous materials like mercury, refrigerant gases, foams, and so on. So by following all these steps, we make sure that the market transformation will be robust and will be sustainable over time. So like I mentioned before, we are supported by a wide net of partners from uh, the industrial sector, like manufacturers, technical organizations, governmental institutions, donors, and other implementing agencies from the UN family. We are present in more than 30 countries with both national and regional projects. And here is some up with some of our national projects. And we provide our support uh, at different levels. At the national level, with the development of national strategies, um, national uh, trainings for policy uh, makers, uh, the development of different fundraising proposals. At the regional side, with the development of regional market assessment, regional capacity building for policy makers, and regional harmonization projects. And on the global side, with a wide, um, with lots of tools and resources that we have available for policymakers, such as policy guides, procurement specification guidelines, model regulations, country saving assessment for more than 156 countries. So, for example, the country saving assessment um, provides detailed information per country and per product on the energy, financial, and environmental benefits from switching to more energy efficiency alternatives. Uh, the model regulation on the other side uh, offers countries with a baseline for developing efficiency levels and setting parameters for the five products uh, and have been designed in collaboration with our partners uh, and based on international best practices in such a way that this can be really implemented in the national regulation or be can be taken as a reference when developing or updating the maps. Similar to this, UFRI has recently launched a new series of guidelines exclusively for public procurement to support public procurers um, and technical officials in the uh, implementation of more stringent maps and eco-design requirements on their tendering process for public purchases. As you might know, um, the purchasing power of the public sector is, is very strong and represent almost 30% of the GDP of some non-OECD countries. So there's a huge potential in this sector that is still on top and that would really help to drive nations' economy into a greener and more sustainable one. So talking about potential and based on the country saving assessment I mentioned before, 
I'd like to share with you a few graphs on the saving potentials from the transition to more energy efficient lighting appliances and equipment. Um, in this first graph, um, we can see the savings opportunity from all five products for all the countries that are, have been included in our assessment between 2020 and 2040. So the values that you can see on the right are the annual savings by 2040 if MEPs were implemented today, from which we can see that the cooling uh, products have the largest share. Um, all in all, annual savings could reach more than 1,000 terawatt hours of savings, which is equivalent to 490 power plants of 500 terawatts each, which also represents 940 million tons of avoided CO2 emissions that are released in the atmosphere and 95 billion up to US dollars on electricity bills. So the savings are very substantial. So in this um, second graph, um, I wanted to give a little bit of detail on the lighting side. And we can see the projection of the electricity consumption in uh, between 2020 and 2030 in this case for three scenarios. We have the business as usual, which means keeping the same uh, mix of technologies as we have today, a minimum ambition scenario, meaning the implementation with implementation of the MAPS, and by MAPS I refer to those that we recommend in the mall regulation, and a high ambition scenario in the case that the MAPS that are implemented are more ambitious than the ones that we suggest in the guideline. So um, in this case for lighting, we can see that the electricity consumption for the business as usual stays quite constant, and this is because lighting is a basic product and the market is already saturated. So when we implement MAPS, we see this important decrease in the electricity consumption, and we can obtain annual savings by 2030, for example, more than 100 terawatts hour. In the case of refrigerators and room air conditions, it's a little bit different. So we forecast here a very important increase in the electricity consumption for more than 100%. So we expect this to double, actually. So this is because um, this is a market that will keep on growing in the upcoming years. And the introduction of maps and policies can reduce this increase to 65%. And by 2040, 2040 yes, sorry, we represent savings for 749 terawatts, equivalent to $69 billion and um, 639 million tons of CO2 avoided. Similar with motors and trains, the evolution of electricity consumption is expected to rise 55% compared with current values with savings of up to uh, 300 terawatts hour of annual savings by 2040. So um, as I mentioned previously, we are working with a lot of countries on market transformation projects. And this are, these are some of the examples from our lighting portfolio. Um, and I would like to give you a few details on the project in Pakistan, just as an example. So this project began in 2019 and was expected to finalize this year. So we're going to extend it because of current circumstances. It's a JEF project. It's implemented jointly by NICA, which is the National Energy Efficiency and Conservation Authority. This project included all the components from the policy approach. And here are some of the main achievements to date, such as the development and implementation of the very first maps for efficient LED lighting, which were included for, uh, for bulbs, down lights, tubes, and street lighting, uh, which came into force in December last year. Uh, along with the maps, it was introduced an energy efficiency labeling, which is mandatory and common for all types of LED products. And uh, we rescale a previous level that was already in the country, but for other products. So we, we rescale this from three stars to five stars, and we added this uh, security verification sticker with a scratching code so users can scratch and through their uh, telephones um, uh, confirm that it's a certified product. And also, since this has to be purchased by the manufacturers, this represents a small income. Uh, to finance the MBE activities from NICA. On the MBE side, we have delivered several trainings to testing laboratories, update the custom codes, and develop a product refrigeration system, which is still ongoing. 
Um, we also propose an operational framework to establish an environmental sound management scheme, not only for lighting, but also for all electric and electronic equipment, and also included the extended, uh, extended producer's responsibility system. On the financial side, we develop a guarantee loan fund mechanism to be implemented by NICA with local financial institutions. And finally, we provided technical assistance for the implementation of several pilot projects. This is mainly on office buildings like from NICA, from the Ministry of Climate Change, to universities, to hospitals, for the replacement of lighting fixtures for LED and controls. Last but not least, we have implemented a very strong communication campaign to convey this message of the upcoming maps, the, up, uh, the date of the enforcement, but also uh, to communicate on the benefits of switching to LED lighting to the end users and other energy uh, conservation practices. And uh, the campaign included lectures in universities, radio and TV broadcasts, and a strong digital campaign on social media. Well, um, now on the regional side, here are, are a few examples of the regional activities we have developed, like twinning meetings, technical capacity buildings, and study tours, energy efficiency workshops, so on and so forth. We encourage actually a lot, um, we encourage countries to work together in projects with the regional harmonization approach, as this enables a lot of important benefits. Here are some examples. Um, first and foremost, the reduction of commercial barriers, vision of a larger and more affordable market for energy efficiency products. Secondly, um, to accelerate the adoption of policies between neighboring countries and to allow those countries that are lagging behind um, to catch up on the policies and regulations and to avoid becoming dumping grounds for inefficient products. Um, also, it's a very good efficient way to utilize limited resources because this allows economies of scale and allows spreading the cost among different countries. And this also includes sharing uh, capacities, tools and infrastructure uh, between countries of the same region. Um, also, it prevents the duplication of efforts among allied institutions and brings the opportunity for peer learning between countries on common energy efficiency issues that might rise from similar cultural, social, and economic circumstances. In this same way, it allows a better tracking of the ongoing projects and activities, so we avoid scattered efforts and activities to be overlap, uh, which is fitting. And well, all in all, because of all these things, we create um, a greater impact of the project activities and also allows for a larger engagement of national and regional stakeholders. So uh, this is actually part of the energy compact thematics, and this will be further elaborated in a dedicated session from the same forum tomorrow, same time. So for those who would like to learn more about the original compact, I would like to invite you to register in our website. In our website, I will leave uh, the links of the presentation and join us in the discussion tomorrow. So um, here is the link. I, I think that's all from my side, and I will leave the floor back to you, Gabriela. Thank you very much for the attention. Thank you, Soledad. Uh, thank you for, for the presentation and, and uh, to showing the importance and the, the great uh, uh, opportunities that are around energy efficiency in lighting appliances and equipment. And uh, it, it really is a no-brainer. Uh, so uh, we really uh, very much encourage uh, governments, national level and local level, to to uh, um, develop activity and and uh, um, policies and implementation in in this field. Um, and just because uh, not only um, we need policies and regulation, but uh, for we also need uh, financing for for implementation of. Uh, energy efficiency so actually the the procurement and the purchasing of uh, new technology and more efficient is necessary and for that um, we would like to launch uh, now a second tool that we have uh, developed at the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency on street lighting uh, for, for financial uh, purposes 
And uh, for that, uh, we will just uh, again play a short video, five minute video uh, to introduce uh, this, this tool and uh, for you to be able to see how it actually works, knowing that it's uh, available for free on our webpage. So uh, enjoy the short video. Hello everyone and welcome to this short instructional video by the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. My name is Thibaut and today I will describe the Street Lighting Financing Tool, an actual based tool used for municipalities to determine uh, the best suited business model for their street lighting system. Now the tool is accessible online on our website unetdtu.org by clicking this tab. The user is then required to fill in some basic information about their country as well as the sector they work in. Now by clicking submit the tool is made available here and can be downloaded. Now the tool itself as I said is Excel based and presents itself like this. The user will have to answer a series of yes or no question to determine the business model best suited to finance their street lighting system. So begin new questionnaire. There is a short introduction and context on the tool as well as a disclaimer. The Copenhagen Center does not bear responsibility for the business model that is chosen in the end by the user. By clicking continue you are required to enter name, municipality and country and can begin the questionnaire. The questionnaire comprises 2 to 20 questions according to the choices that are made by the user and should not take more than 10 minutes. Now, the first question, as every following question, is accompanied by a comment that explains the key terms of the, of the question for the user to choose. Now, for the first one, uh, it's about whether the finance should be uh, handled by a third party or by the municipality itself. For the sake of the example, we'll choose yes and continue. Then the system asks if municipality has access to an external revolving fund, which is, as explained again in the comments, an external source of money, public. Then the questions keep going. Uh, as ever with, a, with an explanation in the comments for the, for the user to be able to choose according to the characteristics of the municipality. We will uh, keep answering according to our fictional example. Is the municipality willing to allow the management of partial public funding by a private entity? Mm, we can click no for this one. The total project value. Let's continue. Now a question about whether the contractor will be responsible to operate the structure. There we will click no, considering the municipality will be in charge of operating it. Now, is the municipality pay, willing to pay a fee to the third party based on energy performance? Again, for the sake of the example, yes. Will the municipality bear the technical risk of the project? Yes. Now, does the municipality have margin in the balance sheet to incur in debt, which, as explained in the comments, means uh, the municipality can take the debt in its, in its uh, budget. We can continue. And finally, does the municipality have access to a, an international or national lending program? With, again, examples and explanation in the comments. Once we click yes, the tool will generate a report pointing to a concessional loan, which is a scheme in the category of debt financing. So this lighting system should be financed by debt. It would be the best option for the municipality according to the answers the user has provided. Now, this report, which can be obtained in PDF, as shown here, comprises a description of what a concessional loan is with examples of uh, partners that engage in those loans and examples of such projects. Then a description of debt financing and finally, a list of advantages and disadvantages of using such a financing scheme. Finally, 
there is a summary of the questions and the answers provided by the user. So that is how the tool functions. Each set of questions will generate a different answer and possibly a different financing scheme. And uh, this can provide uh, information, at least on an informative basis, to the user before they choose a definite business model for their lighting system. This is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this short instructional video. And please come back towards us if you have additional questions regarding the tool. My name was Thibaut, and I wish you uh, an excellent day. Okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, second uh, tutorial video uh, and with that uh, we are ready to go on the financing part. And with that I would like to uh, welcome uh, Valentina De Marco, uh, she's, she's uh, um, working for the Network of Municipalities uh, for, Against Climate Change in Argentina. And uh, actually they have uh, developed over the last uh, years uh, a very interesting and unique uh, uh, business model to, for investment uh, on, on sustainable uh, technologies uh, in municipalities in Argentina, which actually got a lot of traction uh, over the last days with uh, a huge media coverage uh, especially from uh, the United States, uh, as, as it was uh, awarded quite a, a, a prominent prize from New York uh, University School of Law. So uh, please, uh, Valentina, the, the floor is yours and tell us about the, the trust fund uh, that uh, you have uh, generated for, for aggregated municipal uh, procurement and purchasing um, uh, solutions for energy efficiency. Uh, Valentina, please, the floor is yours. Hello everyone, my name is Valentina De Marco and I work as coordinator of international alliances in the Argentinian network of municipalities facing climate change, also known as RAMCC. As Gabriela has told you, today I am going to present you an innovative business instrument that we have developed together with the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency for aggregated municipal procurement. This instrument is the RAMCC Trust Fund. To start with, I would like to briefly present you our organization. We are a network that gathers over 220 Argentinian municipalities that are distributed in 19 of the 23 provinces that constitute our country. This evidences the wide variety of political, productive, geographical, and social realities that we approach working with cities of over 1 million inhabitants, as well as with small towns of less than 5,000 inhabitants. RAMCC acts as an instrument to promote local public policies and to coordinate climate action. Our objective is to implement programs and projects related to climate change mitigation and adaptation through the mobilization of local, national and international financial resources. Our vision is to support local government in their transition towards a new management model that is based on citizen participation, decentralization of power and decision making, reduction of inequalities, more efficient use of resources, and acquisition of international commitments that can have local impacts. So today I am going to present you the Ramsey C Trust Fund. However, this is just a link in the chain of efforts needed for the planification and implementation of climate action at local level. That is why it is necessary to count with the model as a whole. This model should consist of four steps. First of all, we have the planification. 
Here, municipalities have to elaborate their sustainable for energy and climate action plans, also known as CCAPs. The CCAPs are documents on which local governments have to identify their greenhouse gas emissions and also to make an evaluation of on their social vulnerabilities and climate risks. Afterwards, they need to define a target for reducing their greenhouse gas emissions and for adapting to climate change. Finally, they have to establish which are going to be the mitigation and the adaptation actions that they will carry out in order to accomplish the targets previously set. Once they have finished with their CCAPs, the next step is the international validation. They have to report the CCAP in international reporting platforms. This step is very important in order to demonstrate the transparency and the political commitment, as well as to comply with global reporting standards. Uh, afterwards comes the implementation of all of those uh, mitigation and adaptation actions that were established in the CCAP. In the implementation step, municipalities generally um, face legal, technical and financial barriers. That is why it's necessary to develop different tools that can help local governments in the execution of these actions. This tool has to be adequate to the reality of municipalities and of the country. In the case of Argentinian local governments, the instrument that was adequate for their realities was the Ramsey C Trust Fund. The final step consists on the revision and update of the CCAPs. This takes place uh, every two years. And it is necessary in order to monitor the progress of the uh, actions that are being implemented and also to verify if the ambition of the target for reducing greenhouse gas emission is aligned to the ultimate goal of reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. The benefits of this model is its replicability. It can function in cities of different countries and different contexts. Its scalability, it can be applied to a flexible number of cities or municipalities and the strengthening of capacities. During all of the steps of this model, municipalities receive technical support of the executive secretary of Ramsey C, and it also includes the trainings of the public officials that will be working on the elaboration, implementation, and monitoring of the CICA. The achievements that Ramsey C has accomplished through the implementation of this whole model is the elaboration of 46 CICAPs. 32 of them have already reached international validation. 13 of these 46 CCAPs have already been updated and revised, and this revision has also accomplished international validation. And 24 Ramsey C municipalities have, be have become members of the Ramsey C Trust Fund. Moving on now more specifically to the Ramsey C Trust Fund, Let's start talking about what is it. As I have already told you, when implementing the mitigation and the adaptation actions that have been defined in the CCAPs, munic municipalities face legal, financial, and technical barriers. This is why the Ramsey C Trust Fund was created, in order to remove this limitation. This instrument acts as a collective tool to join efforts allowing local governments to make investments that couldn't be channeled to a municipality individually. The Trust Fund provides Ramsey C with a transparent and independent body to administer funds of municipalities' members and third-party contributions. How does it work? It has a decision-making body once a year, an ordinary assembly of trustors takes place. All of the municipalities, members of the Ramsey C Trust Fund participate on this event. Here, the crucial decisions are 
are made, like, for instance, the definition of internal policies, the approval of the annual budget, the definition of the tenders that will be taking place during that year, and the election of the representatives that will be part of the mayor's city council. The responsible for obtaining, for obtaining the resources, third-party contributions, and for providing technical support for the execution of programs and projects is the Executive Secretary of RAMCC. The trustee is the Municipal Bank of Rosario. This bank is uh, in charge of managing the funds according to the decisions made by the Mayor's City Council and by the Executive Secretary of RAMCC. The trustors and beneficiaries are the municipalities. When local governments decide they want to become members of the Ramsey C Trust Fund, they are required to have already finished with their CCAPs. And th this membership should be approved on one side by the mayors with the sign of contract and by the city council through an ordinance. The procedure for making collective procurements through the Ramsey C Trust Fund consists on the selection of the technology that is going to be purchased, the, a survey of this technology in the municipalities that will participate in this purchase, and the definition of the technical aspects that the technology should have, then the preparation of specifications for the bidding and the definition of the technical and economic evaluation process, Afterwards, the technical and economic evaluation of the bidders and, and an order of merit. And finally, an, the evaluation of results with the annual economic savings, annual energy consumption savings, and annual greenhouse gas emissions avoided. We have already had two cases of success. One took place last year in 2020. The technology bot was of LED lightings. The number of luminars was of 676. There were nine municipalities involved. The investment made was of approximately $128,000. The annual emission reduction was of 109 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent and the annual energy consumption savings was of uh, 238,686 kilowatt hour. The other case of success took place earlier this year. The technology was also LED lighting. The number of luminars increased to 2,536. There were 12 municipalities involved, and the investment made was of approximately $400,000. During the assembly of trustors that took place this year, the tenders that were defined were, were of solar panels, the bidding starts actually today, of solar water heater, the bidding starts in August this year, of micro water meters with remote management, this is still in survey stage, of, le of electromobility, this is also still in service stage, and two tenders for LED luminaires, one per semester. Actually, one of them is the case of success I just uh, told you about. The evaluation of the results with the economic, with emission reduction and energy consumption savings, it's going to be ready in July this year. To finish with my presentation, I wanted to outline again the fact that the Ramsey C Trust Fund is just a link in the chain of efforts needed for the planification and implementation of climate action at a local level. That is why our ultimate goal is to replicate the whole model for the planification and implementation of climate action in cities from different countries and contexts. Thank you very much for your time. You have my email on screen in case you want further information. Thank you, Valentina. A very insightful and very inspiring uh, model that uh, you have uh, successfully developed in, in Argentina, which is, uh, as I mentioned before, raising a lot of attention uh, internationally and for which uh, uh, huge con congratulations from, from our end. Um, I would like uh, now to invite uh, the, the panelists for a couple of questions. Uh, 
if you can all uh, turn your cameras on and uh, uh, Valentina and, and Soledad so that we can uh, just do a, a, a short discussion and, uh, and uh, close the day uh, today. So, um, yeah, thanks again for, for uh, uh, explaining about your work and, uh, um, and what are the opportunities around energy efficiency in, uh, in, in this lighting uh, uh, equipment and appliances. Um, I would like to ask Soledad, uh, what type of funding support uh, do you think countries can have access to develop national regulatory frameworks for minimum performance standards for appliances? What are the opportunities that you see lying ahead for, uh, for example, a country to develop their regulatory frameworks and how to implement it, and if uh, UNEP and United for Efficient can actually support that. Uh, Soledad, uh, the yes. floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, yes, that's, um, that's true. There's a lot of different uh, alternatives for uh, project financing, both on the national and the regional levels, first of all, to uh, develop proposals that have this regional approach and also uh, national uh, approaches. So, um, for example, there's uh, the CHEF that actually there's going to be an next round that starts now uh, next year, it's round eight, in which each country has their own allocation that they can um, in, they can dedicate to uh, different kinds of projects, including climate change and energy efficiency. Uh, there's also the uh, Green Climate Fund uh, in its readiness track, which is a very interesting alternative because this is an annual budget that is renewed every year, uh, and it's a very um, short process. It's very quick and very easy to implement, so this is a good alternative. And then there's some other projects, uh, but it's not with the country allocation. It's more like a, like a, like a process that you provide or you submit a proposal that you might be picked or not, such as like the NAMA, IKI, and so on. So there's there's a lot of options and it depends um, on the country requirements also. So yeah. And UNEP is ready to support, uh, depending, um, I would say, on, on the resources available and uh, of course, let's say. Sure, yes. We, we provide uh, support in the development of the proposals because uh, um, at this point, we, we know quite well what it's um, required for each of the different programs, what it's uh, needed and how to put together the proposal. So, of course, together with the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, or it depends on each country, we can uh, develop together uh, a proposal that suits their, their needs, their, their requirements. So, yeah, happy, happy to support on this side. Okay, thank you very much. I would like now to turn to, to Valentina and, and, and ask, uh, I mean, you, you have implemented a very successful model in, in, in Argentina with the Argentinian municipalities. Uh, how do you see this? Uh, you actually mentioned it in your presentation, but how do you see uh, it being replicated elsewhere? I would say probably in Latin, other Latin American countries. And what kind of advice would you uh, give to other communities that would like possibly to replicate uh, this model? Okay, yes, as I already told in the presentation, the whole model is, uh, it has replicability and scalability in a flexible number of cities and in different contexts of different countries. So um, these are some of the, of the main benefits of it. Uh, it is extremely important to count with an assessment, with the first diagnosis of the uh, situation relating as regards climate change of the ter of the territory, in order to planificate uh, to make a, a, an adequate planification of the climate action that should be implemented in uh, the municipality or or the go local government. When this diagnosis is made and also the planification, then a tool should be developed, but this tool should uh, allow uh, the collective procurement because aggregated procurement enables municipality to access to better qualities of technology at better prices. And also, uh, it removes those financial, legal, and technical barriers 
that are several limitations uh, that municipalities face when implementing their mitigation and adaptation actions. So uh, if this model uh, should be uh, replicated in, in other countries, then uh, these are some these are some points that should be taken into consideration. The, the fact that uh, it should allow collective uh, procurements and also it should remove these uh, financial technical barriers that are the, the, the studies or assessments that, uh, that are limitations for local government, gover governments. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And and actually, I realized this is quite a flexible mechanism. Uh, you started with uh, LED street lighting, but uh, you actually managed to, to move into other technologies. So this is, in your view, also uh, a good potential uh, for replication, right? Yes, of course, of course. It could be replicated with different technologies. Uh, maybe um, we are uh, actually the tenders that are uh, for for 2021 uh, included solar panels, for example, solar heater waters, electromobility. So yes, it's uh, totally flexible to different kind of technologies. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much to my fellow uh, lady companions in this uh, event. Um, uh, it was uh, a pleasure to have you uh, together with me uh, uh, this this uh, this day and on this event as a, as a side event uh, um, of the ministerial track uh, for the high level dialogue on energy that uh, will uh, will happen. Um, during this week and running up to uh, September, where actually uh, the big event is going to take place uh, in New York, hopefully uh, uh, presential. On our end, uh, on, from the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency, I would like also to say that uh, and, and uh, highlight that we keep on developing uh, tools and mechanisms to support countries and municipalities as well to adopt energy efficiency regulatory frameworks and uh, investments. So please keep on checking our website. We are actually working on a, uh, a few other tools that would be uh, valuable um, as well to municipalities and countries, namely for addressing energy efficiency in buildings, uh, and some others on on motors and pumps and water supply systems um, and and so and on district energy as well. So please uh, check out our website. We are working on um, developing them and making them available for free as well in our toolbox uh, at the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. And with that, I would like to end uh, this event. Thank you very much again to uh, Valentina and Soledad uh, for being uh, with us today. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, webinar and looking forward to seeing you in another occasion. Thank you very much and goodbye.